Hello everyone, it's Rune here, and today I'm going to talk about how you can make the most out of your ESO Plus. With ESO Plus trial you get access to all the DLC, and maybe you didn't know yet, but simply by heading to some of the DLC zones you can get free pets and personalities. Yes, my precious, free personalities. Now ESO Plus also doubles your housing limiting and banking, and also gives you access to the crackback. So we'll be covering these three main aspects that are very worthwhile when you get ESO+. Plus. Now it might be possible that you are watching this video in the future or that I maybe missed something. We also got a written version underneath in the comments and in the description. And every time I find out that I missed something or I can add something or something gets added to the game, I will directly update it on the web page. So if you check out the web version, it will always be up to date. So without too much further ado, let's get started with number one, the crackback. Now the crackback is pretty straightforward. Basically it's a bag full of, well, not crack actually. It's basically a craft bag. And what this craft bag does, it's a bottomless bag where you can store your crafting materials. You can store as many crafting materials as you want into it. So what can you do with the ESO Plus membership? Temporary access to make it easy for yourself. Well, if you are a master crafter, or anything like that, I really would recommend to get a lot of materials like 3,000, 5,000 rubidite inknits or leather and stuff like that. Why? If you have that in the crack bag, or well the craft bag, you will never ever have to walk back to the bank because it will simply consume the items from your crafting bag. So it is very nice if you go to a crafting station and you don't need to retrieve those items from a bank or anything like that because you are carrying them around all the time and it's account wide. Once you lose the ESO Plus membership, however, the materials that are in the crafting bag will stay in the crafting bag, but any new harvested materials will go to your regular inventory. So it's a great way to get a lot of materials and store them in the crafting bags, so you will be fine and you will not really have to focus about getting those materials from one character to another, or to have like 300 ignits on that character for your daily rates, then another 300 on that character. You can just have a total pool and just keep crafting with that for a while. If you get a lot like 5,000, 6,000, 6, that should probably last you until the next offense. I'm pretty sure it will. It of course depends how many master crafters you have, if you have like 4 or 6. But yeah, that is the number one tip. Number two is housing and banking. As an ESO Plus member, you have double the amount of items you can place in a house. So maybe in the past you actually furnish your house and you hit a limit. Maybe the limit was like 300 for you, maybe it was 200. It also, of course also depends on the kind of home you have or house. Now it's doubled. With the ESO Plus membership, instead of 200 item limit, you might have 400. Or instead of 300, you might have 600. So stuff that house while you can and just place the items all over the place. Of course, if you retrieve the items, once the ESO Plus membership is gone, you won't be able to replace it. But you can literally like dump them in your main hall and then put them in order later on. If you already know like I want that chair in the main hall or anything like that. Now banking, same story. Banking will be double the amount. Of course, this is dependable on your upgrades if you will have instead of 200, 400, but it's just double the amount anyway. So instead of 100, you can have 200. And vice versa, like the house, once you retrieve an item and your ESO Plus membership is gone, you will most likely not be able to redeposit again unless you are not over the normal limits. And on to, to the next one. Free pets and personalities. Now the ones I have listed here are pretty much the most easiest ones to get. So the first pet that you can unlock is a jackal. And you can simply unlock the jackal by traveling to Hughes Bane, go to the way shrine that you have already unlocked and enter the city called Abbas Landing. Or even if you, before entering the city, just getting close to it, you can already get the jackal and will be added to your collectibles. And ta-da, you have the jackal pet. The next pet can be acquired by simply traveling to Murkmire. Once you have arrived in Murkmire, you will directly get the pet added to your collectibles. This beautiful pet with a super easy to pronounce name, 
Fair degrees high motor. Yeah, I mean, I nailed that. Anyways, this pet is like an alligator snapping turtle and it very much resembles one. Just look at a cute face and ah, my finger! Stupid turtle, take that and that and... The next pet can be found simply by traveling toward Rothgar and once arrived in Rothgar you have to travel to Orsinim. Orsinim is very close to Wei Shrine so once you are there in Rothgar simply head to Orsinim and you will get the Ekalet pet. I'm a little bit unsure on how to describe this pet so judge for yourself. And last but not least you can unlock the Skindle and Dova fly which is basically a mechanical Dwemer dragonfly by entering the Bass Fortress. So simply head to Clockwork City and directly right in front of you, follow the road ahead, cross the Gandalf Bridge, enter the fortress and boom, you got your pet. And those are all the pets pretty much as, as far as I am aware. If I missed any, just let me know in the comments and we'll directly add it to the website. Or of course, if there is a new DLC or expansions which adds them, I will of course update that as well. And of course the personalities. There are two personalities you can unlock very easily. The assassin personality and the heroic personality. The assassin personality is unlocked simply by traveling to the Gold Coast and once you arrive there you already unlocked it. And the heroic personality is unlocked by either going to Cradle of Shadows or Ruins of Mazatun which can be found in Shadow Fen. There are also two costumes that are very easily unlockable. The one from the Dark Brotherhood costume the Shroud Armor, this is the Dark Brotherhood Armor and the Thieves Guild Ladders. Both of these costumes are unlocked by completing the first guild quest. So for the Dark Brotherhood, directly after you come out of the Way Shrine, walk towards the docks to the left and there you will find an NPC in Shroud Armor. Well, you already guessed it, talk to Emily and you will have to kill an innocent person in order to start and complete this quest. Now, if you're doing this and you don't want to get caught or anything, you first of all have this fisher over here, which you can quite easily kill. And if that isn't really, if you're too nervous for that, or you want to kill someone else, there is also this guy who is looking for strength and muscles, and it's very easy to kill as well. And for the Feast Goat, well, the Feast Goat is very simply, just pour to use Bane and directly right in front of you, there will be a quest giver. Talk to her, she's in Shrouded Armor as well and that's where you start the Thieves Goat. Complete the first quest and you get these costumes. Now, notable worthy, if you complete the Dark Brotherhood wall questline, you will also get the Black Hand Rope costume and the Silencer title. You can also unlock the Executional title by completing the Litany of Blood achievement from the Dark Brotherhood, which requires you to kill 15 precise targets in the world and the Master Thief title and the coin of illusory riches memento that requires you to steal 16 precise items in the world basically you have to join these guilds and once you have joined these guilds you will have several quests including these in their main hall the thieves guild main hall can be found of course in hughes bane and once you go in hughes bane like right over here is the thieves den and for the dark brotherhood once you have joined and completed a quest you will be brought to the Dark Brotherhood anyways, but you can find it over here. You can also earn 4 unique recipes from Orzorga, who can be found in the Orzinium aka Rapstone. Simply after you have taken a Merchant's Gateway Shrine, you head north, north, follow the road, basically at the Morgulden Forge, go left and then keep following and you will find Orzorga. You can get 4 different recipes. You can get the Orzorga's Red Frotgar, increase max health and Magicka recovery. You can get the Orzorga Triple, Triple Pocket, increase max health and stamina recovery. You can get Orzorga's Blood Prize Buy, increase max health and health recovery. And a gold recipe called Orzorga's Smoke Beer Hound, increase max health, health recovery and stamina and Magicka recovery. So basically, just go here, talk to her, start the quest. And that's how you get it. Complete the quest and once you have the last quest, a piece to remember, that's when you will get the golden recipe. And if you ever were in need of skill points, do not forget to pick up those skill points, sky shots or like I said skill points 
from the quests like the guild quest from Dark Brotherhood and Peace Guild can provide you with tons of skill points as well as the sky shards that can be found throughout all of these DLC zones especially worthwhile if you are actually grinding sky shards at the moment but you don't have access to these DLCs. And of course you can also dye your costumes so if you have been wanting to dye your costumes for a while this is the chance to dye your costumes the colors will stay even after eso plus is expired and that is pretty much it if you like this video please feel free to leave a comment leave a like and subscribe many more guides are on this youtube channel and many more are coming check out learneso.net for gold guides grinding guides builds for both pve and pvp are you a content creator yourself and you have some good builds or guides? Feel free to contact me on Discord or on Twitter if you want to be fugitives on the website and we can talk about it. I wish everyone a great day. Bye bye. See you in Tamriel. I'm out.